Hello to my viewers out there. My name is Melinda Moulton, and I welcome you to Moments with Melinda. Hey, I, I want to tell you who we have with us today. We have Will Caso Condry, Jennifer Herrera Condry, and Alexa Herrera Condry, the principals of Juniper Creative Arts. Hey, guys. Hi. Hey. Thanks for being here. We're happy to be here. Yeah, this is terrific. I'm so excited for people to learn more about you and about the work that you've been doing in Vermont. So we only have a half an hour, so I'm going to kick it right off. What I'd love to do is share with our viewers a little bit about your lives and who you are. You're a family, mm -hmm. you're a husband, wife, and a child, and you are the principals of this, of this incredible arts group called Juniper Creative Arts, and you're putting your stamp of beauty all over all over Vermont, but certainly in the city of Burlington. So why don't you share a little bit about who you are, where you came from, what's your inspiration, and a little bit about your relationship in your company. No, let's start with Alexa. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> I, my background, I studied photography and computer science in college. And so when I graduated, I joined Juniper Creative because we had launched that semester that I had graduated. And it was just a nice seamless transition into working with my family um, and being able to bring my skills that I had been studying for so many years and applying them into the real world. Where'd you go to school? I went to the University of Vermont. And when did you graduate? <laughs> and I graduated <laughs> class of 2020. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Jen, what about you? Yeah, well, um, I'm originally from New York City. I'm the daughter of Dominican immigrants. I've been in Vermont since 2002. I came here to work for Middlebury College. Uh, my background is in multicultural student affairs and diversity, equity, and inclusion work. And um, a lot of the work that I was doing was using creative expression to help um, students from marginalized backgrounds um, find a sense of place. I was literally create, you know, doing creative placemaking at Middlebury College for so many years, especially with mostly with students of color and first generation college students. And um, that's how I met Will. And our story evolved from, from that point uh, in terms of our creative uh, collaboration. Will, how about you? <laughs> um, I was born and raised in Trent, New Jersey. Uh, I moved to Vermont five years ago this year. Um, I met Jennifer in 2012 uh, on an invite here from my niece who at the time was a sophomore at Middlebury College. Mm -hmm. And uh, she brought, she reached out to me and asked me would I come up to the school to do a talk about using art as a form of activism. During that time, I was, um, I founded and was creative directing a nonprofit in Trent, New Jersey called Sage Coalition. And through that work, we use an art to beautify impoverished communities, not just impoverished economically, but spiritually. And, you know, mm -hmm. we also looked at that work as a way to build communities from within. You know, instead of pushing people out, work with the people that's there. And so I go up to Middlebury College in May of 2012 and hung out with Jennifer that evening. And we, you know, just hung out, talking, kept, you know, getting to know each other. It was it was pretty beautiful, you know. And um, I moved here four years later when Jennifer and I decided to take the next step in our relationship. And, and now we and since officially since 2020 we've been doing this work together but we've been collaborating since we've known each other and yeah so it's been a many many years of collaboration not just in community work but just in life you know we've built this life together um we bring all of our mutual experience you know and creativeness into what we do so you're looking at 40 combined years you know i say 40 plus now because alexa's in <laughs> you know yeah but um we figure out and continue to grow and evolve in ways where we challenge each other, you know, mm -hmm. still sharp and still. So we work seamless because we don't just stop after a project or a mm -hmm. mural. We keep finding creative ways just to be in existence with one another. So yeah, yeah everything turns to art eventually. 
in 2020, we, you know, founded our business, Juniper Creative, uh, also based on the work that Will and I had been collaborating on prior to that from 2017. So the first three years of our relationship, we were leading community mural projects. Yeah, primarily in um, college campuses. Yeah. Yeah. So you've been able to bring your activism into your work as a family. Uh, I want to tell them, I want to share with my viewers to learn more about Juniper Creative Arts. You can visit their Instagram, which is Juniper Creative LLC, Juniper Creative LLC. And Instagram, you can see so much of their beautiful work. And you can also reach them at info at junipercreativearts.com. So I want to ask you, how is it working together as a family? (laughs) <laughs> I love it. My mom has always been my best friend. So being able to graduate college and getting to work with not only her, but also my dad, Will, it's it's just been amazing. Sometimes Will jokes and says she's in um, an MFA program in Castle <laughs> College. <laughs> and I'm learning quite a bit. Well, the, yeah. thing, the thing about Castle <laughs> College is that it's very hands-on and it's on you. You know, we're all adults here and we're all creative, but we also have individual individual disciplines, which have to be nurtured and, and, and attended to as well. But that's up for us to make that schedule around it. I can't tell Alexa when to draw or when to paint something outside of a project. I just ask, is she painting or is she drawing, you know? And if so, I would like to see it because art is meant to be shared. So everything we do in the world starts at home. Our nation starts, your nation starts in your home. So we don't promote anything that we don't do. Yeah. Well, Um, I know, you know, Jen, you shared with me a, a painting that Will did of you a while back. I mean, your home is extraordinary. The the painting and all of your murals, uh, your 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 home exudes your your gift of creativity. Uh, but tell the story, uh, Jen, of the of the painting that will paint it of you. Um, and we're going to have you show some of your work. But talk a little bit about about the the personal aspect of of the work. Well, so the piece that I shared with you is called the Water Bearer. It's a painting that will worked on for like three years was it three years well was- two years two years it was about two years i started it it was a canvas i had originally started while i was still based in trend then i brought it up and once i came up to vermont jennifer and i got together the energy was just different in it mm-hmm. so i like literally repainted over it and started getting inspired by one of jennifer's playlists erica if i do playlists <laughs> So I would play that in the studio while I was in there just trying to like, you know, conjure up something to paint. And this image started coming out of a woman carrying a lot, you know? Um, First she started off pregnant, then she started off with carrying a child on her back, which morphed into a butterfly because it was like the child was in a cocoon. So it literally was evolving over these two years. And during quarantine is when I finished it. So. Yeah, and I presented to Jennifer. Now it hangs in front of our stairway. Yeah. Would you say that Jennifer is your muse? Yeah, yeah, yeah hands down. <laughs> you know, uh, I tell everybody, you know, people who who know me for a long time and they see what I'm doing out here, they see what we're doing. They was like, yo, man, like the colors, are, like what's going on? I was like, I got Jennifer. <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, I got, I got Jennifer. And Alexa as well. Alexa, Alexa is like the 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 younger version of Jennifer in a sense where Jennifer is very honest about expectations and you know presentation and just diligence. Alexa is the backup. So when I start <laughs> <laughs> when I start to you know get into my feelings or become an emotional brooding artist, they pull me out of that. Yeah. You know, it's like nah come on man. Yeah. He know. calls her Echo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or a so, megaphone. Or a megaphone. You know, Alexa, that's the beautiful thing about Alexa's generation. Like they are not afraid to tell you how they feel and for our generation Mm -hmm. we were trained to hold that in so for for me for all of us creative our creative expression helps us deal with those emotions Mm -hmm. you know so when things you know we're we're only human so when we're not seeing eye to eye we typically you know first talk about it give each other our space talk about it then find a way to create from it 
Yeah. Well, I had the most extraordinary opportunity to work with you for 11 months when you agreed to uh, the three of you to paint the mural at Main Street Landing in the Lakin College and um, share, you know, the story of, of how you came to to me because it was so serendipitous of how that happened. And it was shortly after the George Floyd, Floyd murder. So could you share that story with with our viewers? Um, yeah. You want to you wanna go? Well, a, f a good friend of ours, who's another mural artist, Mary Lacey, what we understand had um, approached you about having Will paint a mural in at the Performing Arts Center. And at the time, no one really knew as much, you know, Will is the is the artist, right? He is the painter. So most of most what people don't realize is how much of um, the partnership we do have, the creative relationship we do have, and how we collaborate on um, on mural projects together. So that didn't come forward until we had our first meeting with you. Right. And I remember you talking about having this vaulted ceiling and um, wanting Will to be able to do whatever he thought would make sense um, that really helped document some of the activism that we were seeing after George Floyd was murdered. And I remember meeting with you and thinking through some ideas and also thinking about the rich uh, history of Black Vermonters in Vermont as well. And afterwards, Will and I sat down and talked and I said, you know, Will, it might make sense to really celebrate and document the history of black and brown revolution yeah. and 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 the legacy of which all of the social justice this movements that exist today sit on the legacy of all these other movements that and activists and scholars and artists and educators you know that that are historical figures but also modern day um folks that are still doing the work whose work informs activism today, right? And many of the social justice movements that exist today that are being carried through by this younger generation yeah. now. And that's when we came back to you and said, what do you think about this? And okay. you were like, yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I said, I loved it. And the one thing that I remember that Will, that you all were so concerned about because in the past, your work had been covered over or removed. Mm -hmm. And I remember one of the things that, that, I, that, I, that I assured you was that this would, that this would be here forever. Mm -hmm. um, and then you spent 11 months mm -hmm. basically living in the green room downstairs, <laughs> up in the, that, that lift, and uh, put your heart and soul in yeah. this extraordinary mural. And... Um, and it really is a work of art and, and more than a work of art, it's a work of humanity. And uh, I cannot wait for everything to open up in a way that people can really see it in a way it needs to be seen. Um, Alexa, do you wanna share a little bit about your experience with that? Because that was sort of the early on time that you joined your, your parents mm -hmm. in this work. Yeah, that was um, what our first really big project um, that I was a part of in long took so long yeah. but I mean, you know it was so yeah. intentional you know the time it took it meant that we were putting like blood sweat and tears into it we lost sleep over <laughs> it <laughs> you know it we was... weren't home mm -hmm. you know there was a certain point and sorry to cut no. you off but you know there was a certain point where it was Alexa who was at home maintaining oh, our home. home yeah and while Will and I were away and yeah. You know, she would like get our laundry, wash it for us, yeah. bring it back. Yeah. You know, yeah. we'd go grocery shopping. You know, there was she'd come up and do some work with us, and you know the 
everything that we had to do to tag team in order to, you know, continue to thrive and survive, I guess, during, the, during that time. And stay on track. Yeah. And stay on track. Well, well, I remember saying to Will, um, when he said, I, cause you were changing things. And I said, Will, it's never going to be finished. I said, yeah. to Will, and towards the end there, I mean, you really were dragging and you were, you know, and it was like getting to be sort of tedious because at the time and everything else and you, you, and I said, it'll never be finished. Yeah. And, you know, if, and if ever you want to come back and, you know, touch it up or whatever. Or change, yeah. I mean, there was, we can't do that, that, but it's never been finished, like, so. Oh, we could touch something up over in that corner. <laughs> no, but you know, the thing about it is that, you know, there's over a hundred portraits on that ceiling right mm -hmm. so in the process of figuring out how to represent these portraits how these people you realize everybody deserves the same amount of attention mm -hmm. right so just because a portrait is smaller doesn't necessarily mean it's going to take the same amount of time as something that's twice the size what's twice the size may take actually less time mm -hmm. so for the, for me i had to figure out a way to render these portraits so that so that no matter what you know, whether some are more refined than others, that they're complete because there's the portraits are meant to be representative, representative of coming out of stone. Mm -hmm. Like these are not just portraits, they're mountains, you know, they're waterways, they're waterfalls, you know. So if you're looking at this portrait from a standpoint of like, I'm not just looking at a painting, but I'm looking at a sculpture within a painting, you know, that was my mindset 21 feet up, you know, back hurting, you know tired, hungry, hot, because during the summer it was sweltering up there, you know? So, and at the same time, you know, trusting my team, you know, when I wasn't physically able to do certain things, Alexa and Jennifer stepped up, base field things, you know, everyone learned how to drive the lift, mm -hmm. to move in a certain positions, because if that wasn't taught, then they would consistently depend on me for everything. And in doing something like that as a team sport, I shouldn't have to be the one to carry everything. You know, Jennifer handled the concept, which was the script. Mm -hmm. So I, I always tell people like, Jennifer's the writer, I'm the illustrator. Mm -hmm. So look at it like a visual book. Mm -hmm. You know, Jennifer wrote the story. So it was my job, no different. Michelangelo had the book of Genesis as his script, you know? So I never looked at it as so much as unfinished as more so it could be added on to. Mm -hmm. You know, I can go up there and add 20 more portraits because I can fit them into the stone. So it's not like, oh, this the space is a foot wide. Well, it'd be a foot wide portrait. You know, so that was my mindset. So that's not, not so much that, oh, it's not finished, it's that it can just consistently be added on to. It's literally a living, breathing document of history. It is. And and so I want to move into sharing a little bit of your work with our viewers. And again, I want to remind all of you that if you want to learn more about Will and Jen and Alexa, to go to their Instagram at Juniper Creative LLC. And you can always reach them at info at junipercreativearts.com. Let's show it, let's show some beautiful uh, uh, images here for yeah. our viewers. Okay. So what we're gonna be showing is some of our select public art projects and commissions for the past, since 2019. Mm -hmm. Um, so this is one that we did in Burlington where Pine Street Studios is on where I think the uh, current farmer's market is. It wraps the entire building. So what we're seeing, what you see here is just two parts of the entire building. Yeah. The, the, the one facing... This one here faces the south side of the building, and this one faces the Pine Street side of the building. It, uh, these are all Burlington youth that we, Alexa did a photo shoot with them, and we brought them into the mural. Uh, what you don't see in this is that it also shows uh, poetry ex excerpts from some of the uh, local youth as well. And it's in our Afro-Pollinator series. So the three Afro-Pollinator warrior youth in the front. And then Will wanted to show uh, this idea of um, 
youth and family joy. So these kids are literally hanging out on one of those old carousels that don't exist anymore <laughs> because our generation ruined it yeah. for the younger generation because yeah. we used to play and spin each other and it's everything like was first, so dangerous. It's like the first extreme <laughs> sport. Those things were dangerous. Right? <laughs> they so much fun. Yeah. So <laughs> these three um, Afro-pollinator warriors are literally like protecting they're, they're, they're in the front protecting this joy that tends to get squashed or killed um, in so many ways where we're losing, where we're trying, not losing, but we're trying to definitely reclaim a certain joy that um, has been, has been diminishing yeah. through and not allowed to shine. Um, because of many, you know, oppression and racism and other issues. This was another project at uh, the Alchemist Brewery in Stowe. It's a four, um, almost 1,400 square foot silo. Will tackled this one all on his own. Well, Alexa, <laughs> Alexa came through in the clutch at the end because she assisted in helping me seal it. And also... Yeah just to hop in, I didn't mean to cut you mm -hmm. off, Jennifer. Um, but in order to, this was based off an of illustration that I created like a year prior yeah. uh, while we were camping at Lake Willoughby. Mm -hmm. And Jennifer was the one that was like, yo, that's, because we were already in talks about doing this. Mm -hmm. And Jennifer was like, yo, that's the one you need to put on the silo at Alchemist. And at that time, it was still a simple sketch. So I wasn't that convinced. I'm like, oh, you know, I get to it. It was just just getting an idea out of my head. Mm -hmm. So later that year, um, Jennifer was like, no, finish it. And we could present this. And I did. And Alchemist went for it. So we had to use a projector to project the illustration onto the silo. And we could only do that at a certain hour. We were out there like three in the morning projecting this silo. Yeah. And then I had to go up and outline it. So I have, so I had some sort of a guide, mm -hmm. you know? And it had to be projected in two sections, sections because there was a tree like this. If you see all this greenery here was blocking yeah. the ability for the, the image to wrap the, the silo. So I had yeah. to do one section and then move to the backside and project the other part. Yeah. So projecting... It's an art in itself. It really is. Because it's, I, it's, it's, I'm sorry, yeah. um, but it's like it's it's math. It's yeah. it's physics. It's all that you know. Yeah. You gotta work with so many different elements. Yeah. You know. Um, it's and, literally like taking the gr the gridding technique in large scale mural painting to a whole other level. Yeah. Um, you know, which brings us back to Main Street Landing again. Yeah. You know, we none of those two of the portraits were freehanded. Yeah. The other portraits, um, I projected everything to like create the composition mm -hmm. for Will to then go up and, and um, outline the portraits. Yeah. So that we were able to, you know, make, you know, position things in different ways because what I was seeing in my head was difficult to share with Will so that he could see it. So I would literally just take the projector and like aim it in a particular part of the ceiling with the image and say, there, I want it there. And he'd be like, great. And then he'd go up on the lift yeah. and outline the image. And then that's how we got all those portraits up. Yeah, so it's and more- you, And you painted it with acrylics, not with spray yeah. paint because of our environment. Now look, we're running out of time here. So I was wondering, do you have any pictures of that, of the mural? That's in yeah. the lobby. Yeah. Right okay. There. So here, <laughs> so here is this is like one shot. If you can see it, it this is the best image we were able to capture. That That's gets not even the ceiling. Entire, yeah. But you get you get a, a, a sense of the vastness of it. Yeah. You know, um, I think for us, like you have to, you know, look at it as a puzzle. Mm -hmm. You know, there were so many pieces. We were adding pieces as we were going. We started off with 36 figures and it quickly swelled. And each one of those figures took take time, you know? Mm -hmm. So once we figured out everyone that was going to be on the wall, we had to, we, we was like, well, what is going to, how are we going to connect them all? 
you know, because some were um, taken from old photographs. Some we had models for, like Alexa model for Lucy Terry Prince, you know. Um, then we had to figure out, like, well, what, what's the connecting background? Mm -hmm. And that's when we decided on a nature thing be, and having our, because in African spirituality, we believe our ancestors live in stone, live in water, live in the air we breathe. Mm -hmm. So vis visually represent that from um uh, african spirituality standpoint mm -hmm. you know also focusing on the haitian revolution which was the only successful slave revolt in history you know using that from a place of pride because especially when our story is being told by people up outside of our culture it's typically starting with enslavement or trauma and torture you know now mind you yes these people endured some very serious traumas in their life but that's more of a story of European colonization and enslavement, more so than the beautiful richness of African culture and people of, um, you know, from the Aspen diaspora, um, BIPOC, you know, whatever term you want to use, that the richness of who we are from a spiritual level. Yeah. Wow. I mean, we really create at the intersection of healing and identity yeah. and community and justice and spirituality. Yep. I mean, that's who we are, you know, and through the lens of hip hop culture and through, you know, ancestral wisdom. Yeah. I mean, that is the core of who we are individually and as a collective. Yeah. And this mural has an educational component to it. So I'm yeah. going to go back. I'm going to go back to us because we only have a few more minutes. Yeah. If that would be okay. Because um, I want to talk a little bit about the educational piece too. And um, thank you. And I'm just going to go to uh, to our to our gallery view so we can talk so we can see each other. Um, uh, thank you for that. Um, it's, I could spend hours and hours speaking with you about this. Um, so the educational component, because after you did this extraordinary mural, mm -hmm. spent those 11 months, you know, on your back, you know, like Michelangelo, really. Um, then it was like, how do people know? So talk a little bit about that process that happened where when people go in and see the mural, how they how this this is an educational piece. Yeah. Well, so we worked with um with you hired a fabricator. So and we worked signs. With, yep. Yep. And we worked with their graphic designer. Alexa photographed um each portrait. And we provided the graphic designer with the files, your staff. Um, helped write many of the bios and um, and those little squares that you take. Yeah, your yeah, your yeah. yeah, your your staff created the QR codes, created the um, the the files that would link to the QR code with the bios. I helped edit some of the bios so that we made sure that uh, that the pieces of these individual people's bios that were important to us were reflected in that. So people really understood why we chose them um, specifically, because there's so many, I mean, we're talking 230 years, you know, there's so many people who don't get spoken about that have si made significant contributions mm -hmm. to um, justice in the world. And, you know, we had limited time. There's only so much time. There's only so much like square footage. Yeah. Um, and you know, like we started, we, the original scope was 600 square feet. But when we got in there, we're like, you know, it's not going to do it justice. Yeah. And then we went back to you and was like, hey, can we actually like do the whole thing? You're like, yeah. Well, you you know, you got the big clock and yeah. we took over that wall, we wrapped the whole place, you know? But so we have to look at it too where you know it, it was right at the peak mm -hmm. of COVID and everything was shutting down. Yeah. So, you know, Jennifer and I eventually started um looking for the silver lining in it all. And it yeah. was like, well, we've been gifted this time to do mm -hmm. this, you know, so let's not abuse this time. Like let's yeah. really use this time because so much has already been lost. Mm -hmm. So let's make sure that, you know, a hundred years from now, this could be a testament of what good came out of all that, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. yeah. We even feature some, you know, their children. Yeah. 
because that is that generation. That's the next generation. They're going to keep this legacy going yeah. until we achieve the justice that we need in, in the world. And we're hoping that it's, they see it in their lifetime, but they represent that future as well. Yeah. You know? And so right now everyone can go when they are able to go to the space, they can bring their smartphones, they can yeah, scan yeah. the QR code, they can read about it. Uh, you all are producing the same fabricator is creating a brochure that will be a takeaway where, so if someone doesn't have the time to sit there, 100 portraits, QR code, scan and read, they can take something <laughs> home with you know, them. School, school groups are coming yeah. now to see it. So it's an educate where, where it's becoming, um, we're, we're, we're out of time and I'm, I'm so sad about that because I could, I, you know, I could spend so much time with you all. Will, Jen, Alexa, Herrera, Kazo, Condry, your family, Juniper Creative, <laughs> LLC. Um, I just admire you all so much. And we were really blessed to have you walk in to our lives and to pr produce all the incredible work that you're doing around the state. And um, and it will be there forever and ever and ever for, for all time. So I wanna thank you for your time. And to my viewers, um, please go visit Instagram, go to your Instagram and go to Juniper Creative LLC. And you can see all of Will, Jen and Alexa's work with Juniper Creative. 